You can use the data table widget to display your data in columns and rows. And we want to look specifically at how you can select the data in your data table. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by creating our data table. Therefore, I go to the build method and here I create a new method to build our data table. And within this method, we want to create our data table. Therefore, we want to create first of all the columns, which is here this header. Then we create all the different rows. And lastly, we also need to create here each individual cell for a row. Therefore, let's get started by defining all of our columns, which are then later displayed here at the top in our header. And secondly, we create a data table widget and here inside of the columns property, we put then our columns inside. Therefore, we create a new method get columns and here we get then all the columns which you have defined. And then we simply map over these names and we want to create for each of them a data column object. And inside of this data column object, you have the label property where you simply set the text of your column. With this, we already display here the header of our data table. And now we also want to display here all the individual rows. Therefore, you go to your data table and here you have the rows property and we create a new method to display all of our countries. And therefore, I have created here a country model class. And here we have then all the data inside, which we later use. So we have the name of the country, the native name and the code, which is then later used to display here the flag at the beginning. And secondly, I have created an assets folder where we have then all the countries inside which we load. And I don't want to go into detail about it. So I will link another video about how you can display countries in your application. And lastly, I have created in our state a list of countries which we now want to display in our UI. Therefore, we want to create a new method get rows where we get then all of our countries. And secondly, we need to map over all of these countries and for each of these countries, we want to create then a row. And now we can simply display here one individual country in a row. So we want to display the flag, the name and also the native name. To create this data, we simply implement here a cells property where we get then a list of cells. And here we define first of all the flag at the beginning. And therefore I use here the country code to display a flag. And I also have created here another widget, which is then displaying our flag. And this is then basically displaying an SVG image. If you want to learn more about displaying flags and countries, then simply check out the description box where I link this video about countries. All right, now let's go back to our get rows method. And here we already display the first cell. And this is then basically displaying here already this data at the beginning every time our flag. And next to it, we also want to display the name and the native name. And therefore we create here another cell for our name. And therefore I access here the name of our country object. And secondly, I also create another cell for the native name. And with this, we display here all of our countries list in our data table. One important thing to notice here is that the columns needs to match our data. So here we have our data row and here we display first of all the flag. And therefore we also have here the flag at the beginning of our columns and the same for our name. We simply display here the country name. And also here we have the name then as the second column inside. And lastly, we also display here the native name and therefore it also matches here within our column list. Now we want to look at how we can select here different countries in our countries list. To select our countries, we go to our state and here we create another list of all the selected countries. And secondly, we go to our method get rows. And here, every time if we create a row, we can also implement this selected state. And this means we can define if one row is selected or not. And our row is selected if the selected countries contains then the country which we are currently displaying. And lastly, you also need to implement here this on selected change property. And if you do this, then you already see here the selected state at the beginning. However, if I click here anywhere, you see that nothing is happening. And therefore you also need to add then every time the country on which we have clicked to our selected countries list. 
And therefore we get here within our callback an is selected flag and this is then determining if we add our country to our list or not. And if it is selected then we want to add it to our countries list. And therefore if this boolean flag is true then we want to add our country to our selected countries list. And otherwise if we are not adding it then we are removing it and we simply remove then our country from our selected countries list. Also make sure that you wrap here a set state around so that everything gets updated in your UI. And now we can click here on a country and you see that it is selected and it is also displayed in our selected state because here we have defined that if the country is within our selected countries list then it will be displayed as selected. Next to it you also can click here on the top to select then all of your countries and you also can click here again to deselect all of your countries. Another important thing to notice here is that our data table is not scrollable by default. So if you try to scroll here horizontally or vertically, then it doesn't work. Therefore, I simply wrap here around our method build data table another widget, which is called scrollable widget. And inside of this widget, we simply add then around our child a single child scroll view. And we simply put here the scroll direction to axis vertical. And I also wrap here another single child scroll view around with the axis of horizontal. And this will make sure that you can always scroll your data horizontally if you have a lot of columns next to each other. And also vertically if you have a lot of rows here as data inside. So let's try it right now out. I can scroll here vertically like you can see because we have defined here the single child scroll view with the axis for vertical. And secondly we also can scroll here horizontally and this is because we have defined here the single child scroll view and here we have defined this axis horizontally. Another important thing what you can change is here the width of your cells and therefore you simply go here to your data row get rows method. And here where you display your cells you can also change the width of your cell so we want to make this here smaller. And therefore you can simply wrap here around your text widget a container and then you can define here the width for this text. And now if I hot reload you see that the name has here less space and in case that our name is longer then it is going here to two lines or even three lines so you can even define it. And secondly we can do the same thing for our native name therefore I go to the data cell where we display our native name and here I also wrap a container around with a width of 100. And now if I hot reload you see that the width for our native name is also not that big anymore. Another thing what you can do is to have your more control over your is all selected flag. So if you select here everything then it also select all countries by default and if you deselect it then they are deselected. If you want to include here more functionality if you click on this button then you also need to implement here this on selected all within your data table. And here you get then this boolean flag if it is all selected or not and we simply want to print it right now within a snack bar. And now if I click here on this then you see that nothing is happening. He is not changing our state anymore and is always displaying here the value true. So this is selected is always true. And this means if you override here the functionality of this button then you also need to implement this button manually. And therefore you also need to add here our countries to our selected countries. So if it is selected that we have selected all the countries then we put all the countries which we have loaded to our selected countries. And in case we are deselecting all of our countries then we put here an empty list inside. Let's also try this out. So I click here on all selected and you see all selected is true. And if I click here again then you see all selected is false and he also deselected all of our countries. So in total if you want to have more control over your all selected button then you need to implement this here manually and you also need to implement the logic for this button manually and after it you also can put here your individual logic inside what should happen if you select all of the countries or if you deselect all of your countries. If you later select then all of your countries you also can include here another button at the bottom and if you click on this button then you can add your own functionality what should happen with the selected countries. To implement this functionality we go to our build method and here we go to our build data table method 
And here around our scrollable widget, we can then place simply a column and we also make our scrollable widget expanded so that our data table gets maximum space vertically. And under our data table, we want to build then our submit button. And therefore I create here simply a new method build submit button and here I create then an elevated button and every time if we click on this button then you basically can access here all the selected countries and what I do here in this case is to map all of the selected countries to our name and then I also call here this join method to basically create a string out of our country names. And then I simply display here the string with all of our country's names within a snack bar. So let's also try this one out. I have selected here two countries and then I click here on select two countries and you see he is showing here a snack bar with all the countries which we have selected. And basically you can put here your functionality inside what should happen if you click on this button. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses, where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!